And thank you very much, Asper Saab, for uh, accepting our invitation to be part of the conference. And I, you have been you know, very supportive of all ICAP events, whether it be digital board events, uh, student uh, association events, or CFO conference. We have wholeheartedly accepted our invitations. So thank you very much uh, once again. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a wonderful conference. Um, and um, you know, we have had sessions on leadership, about skill sets. And um, uh, on the 8020 principle, we also, you know, had a session once again on leadership, on the radical, you know, what what sort of opportunities and challenges uh, the leader should, uh, you know, how should it be handled. And by now, you must have learned by heart the, you know, uh, the the theme of the conference, which is uh, resilient CFO balancing the act for tomorrow. So um, now, in the segment that we are in right now, it's about um, it, about it's about you know, opportunities beyond uncertainties. And, uh, you know, who could have been a better person to speak about this? Because, you know, as head of uh, or a chairman of Board of Investments, I'm pretty sure if I perceive your role, you must have been looking out for opportunities no matter what's going on around you. So, and, and that's uh, what's the theme of this segment of the conference that, and also people would be, you know, looking forward uh, to listen from your experiences and from your thoughts about opportunities are still in these challenging times. And, you know, we all have heard about this and just Asim also mentioned about this, you know, the, uh, the, the, the translation of crisis, the Chinese translation, you know, danger and opportunities. So there definitely are a lot of opportunities, must be there, must be a lot of opportunities here uh, that we should be talking about. Um, uh, we will keep the format like this that I'll uh, ask a few questions to us for some and then um, uh, we will keep last few minutes for questions and answers uh, from the audience here, from the uh, participants here and I will request the ushers to be ready with the mics towards the end like you know when we are left with almost five minutes uh, I would request all the ushers to be ready with that. So starting with my first question as for as for um, do you really think, are there any, still any opportunities here in Pakistan? A very simple question. Thank you, Osama. Uh, first of all, I'm grateful to Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan for inviting me here. This institute is very close to my heart and I worked with ICAPS in the last 20 years very closely. Uh, before sharing my views, uh, I want to share a disclaimer that uh, I'm not part of any political party or any specific government. I'm a technocrat, and whatever I will share, uh, I will share for the state of Pakistan. What are the lackings, what are the barriers, what are the root causes where we are standing today? And also, what should we do as a state of Pakistan? Not as uh, one political party and one political government. Secondly, uh, I must say that uh, whatever Ali uh, shared about the investment climate and investments and the current scenario, I'm in complete agreement with him. So before sharing a long story and my learnings in the end, I want to share my learnings in the beginning. What is the root cause? There are four root causes actually, as a state of Pakistan as far as the businesses, the investments, the economy is concerned. And the number one and most important root cause is incompetence. Incompetence and incompetence at every level. There is no issue of corruption. There is no issue of corruption where we are standing. This is a misleading narrative and misleading propaganda. I want to say that uh, there is a zero tolerance on corruption, but where we are standing is not because of corruption. How many billions of dollars we wasted because of corruption? All of you are finance persons. But imagine that how many billions of dollars we wasted because of incompetence. So incompetence is the first issue. The second issue is the lack of political will. Whoever is in the government, the current government, the previous government, and all the previous governments in the last few decades. Unfortunately, what is happening in Pakistan, unfortunately, and very sadly, and this is my 
critical evaluation in my learning while working with the business houses in Pakistan as well as with the governments and all the concerned stakeholders, that we are habitual for average performance. As Ali mentioned about 15, 20 million dollars investment, this is nothing. Yes, we should celebrate small successes, but you know, whatever is happening, this is a national attitude now of average performance. So lack of political will is the second issue. Another issue I learned in the last few years, and especially with my very brief stay in the government, and I'm working the government right now also, that there is a lack of collaboration. There is a lack of collaboration for economic development, for economic progress, for creating an enabling environment for investment, a better investment climate. You need to collaborate. Collaboration amongst the stakeholders. Unfortunately, this is missing at every level. So these are my three learnings. And the fourth and most important, all of you are aware, is the lack of continuation of policies. If there is some policy in this government, next government will adopt the new policy. Few good policies adopted in the last government, the new government changed the policies. They are on the another track, actually. So there is no long-term strategy in the government. I was part of the government. I attended every meeting related to economy, investment. And one day I asked the prime minister, just after one week, that uh, I'm feeling like there, everything is on an ad hoc basis. There is no long-term plan. And this is happening since last few decades, not last five years or 10 years or 15 years. So whatever is the current scenario, of course, in the last 10 days, whatever happened is another story. So political stability is another big barrier for our investment and economic climate. Our main issue is political stability instead of economics. Because without political stability, without continuation of policies, without competent team, without political will, without collaborative efforts. You can't, uh, you know, manage the economy or the investment climate for a country of 230 million. So what is happening today that we are becoming irrelevant. Look around us, small countries in Central Asia. Even I was talking to Ali that we are discussing Ethiopia these days. Study Ethiopia, study Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, the ASEAN countries. Look at uh, Bangladesh, what is happening in Bangladesh. So whatever is happening is a collective failure actually of last few decades from all the stakeholders, all three main extreme political parties, the interventions from Pakistan military. I'm saying this very candidly. And we fail to provide a good system for the bureaucracy. My personal learning is that there are brilliant bureaucrats in every ministry and every department. But there is no system, actually. There is absence of system. So without system, you can't do anything. And bureaucrat will never change the system. This is the responsibility of prime minister and the cabinet. So these are the hard facts. The opportunity is that in every sector, there is an opportunity of few billion dollars investment, local and foreign both. There is an opportunity of attracting FDI of few billion dollars annually from six, seven, eight countries, Saudi Arabia, China, and many others. But what we are doing as a state of Pakistan, and every government is doing the same, that we are begging for $2 billion, $1 billion, $3 billion of loan to deposit in our state bank. This is happening. The previous government, the two previous governments, the current government, everyone is doing the same. So all of you are chartered accountants, finance persons. There are two ways of your income. One is export and one is investment. My area is investment. So investment opportunities are here, but uh, what is happening that our existing investors, 
whether local investors or whether foreign investors are facing issue. And now one thing that happens in Pakistan, and I say this in every place, and when I was in BOI, I was saying this at that time, publicly, while sitting at the Prime Minister's office, that in Pakistan, to do a work in Pakistan is a war. Asked with the manufacturing sector, how many notices come in the day, how many problems come in, every six months you have a new policy. In the last six, seven years, we appointed seven chairmen of Board of Investment. In the last six, seven years, we appointed nine or ten federal secretaries for finance. In the last six or seven years, we appointed seven, eight or nine FBR chairmen. So I mentioned about three important components of economy. Investment, taxation and finance. This is the status of our continuation of policies. The poor decision-making, ad hoc system in the governments, whoever is in the government, the PTI government, the PMLN government, the PPP government, or even the military government. So what is needed for Pakistan, and this is beyond lip service, this is my learning, because we are becoming irrelevant. At my last meeting with the investment minister of Saudi Arabia, three, four months back, I'm working with him now for some investment projects. And he said that I'm the biggest salesman of Pakistan in Saudi Arabia. This is known to everyone. But I'm a failed salesman in Pakistan case, despite all my efforts. And he said that in small countries, we are investing billions of dollars. For example, because I look after the Saudi project and I, you know, worked uh, with the collaboration of our private sector. And that's why he called me and he said that you should work with us. And in the last meeting he also said that Pakistan is becoming irrelevant. We have only two, three, four years. He's a person who is managing the investment portfolio of Saudi Arabia, who is the powerhouse now. The last six years, whatever happened in Saudi Arabia is a classic case study. Nothing is happening on ad hoc basis or an assumption. This is all pre-planned. Study about their 2030 vision. Check about their projects like Neom City. They decided to be a powerhouse of every sector of economy not as only as an uh, oil country. Now, many of our business houses are exploring Riyadh opportunity. So they are seriously interested to invest in eight different sectors. During my stay, there were 18 official meetings, and all minutes are available at the Prime Minister's office. They were begging, like, for engaging Pakistan as a food security partner, for example, to establish an agriculture zone, many other areas. The problem is here. The problem is not in other countries or the investors. So, Asfar, if I may interrupt you here, apologies for that. So, yeah, you, you mentioned that there are opportunities and there's definitely a silver lining here. The question is, what's the way forward? You know, I think we, um, more as you have been de defined as a person of action, so, you would like to listen from you that what's the way forward? What should we do to basically materialize these opportunities and, you know, um, you know, do away with the incompetencies that we have been suffering from, the low productivity issues in the manufacturing sector? You know, a lot of uh, multinationals have uh, gone back because of our workers' productivity issues. We all know that. So what's, what's the way forward? What should be done? Whether you will like it or not, there is a need of complete overhauling of the system, the change of system. I'm a very small man, but uh, I must say, this is my learning, that this, this current political system can't work anymore. There is an age of competition, small countries are rising. We can't sustain with this political system. This is the problem. So there is a complete overhauling of the system, including the bureaucratic system, 
appointment of the competent team in different departments, in different ministries, uh, maybe a presidential system, I don't know, but uh, complete overhauling of the system. If we are looking towards uh, Central Asia or the Middle East and in many other countries, one thing is common, the continuation of policies and continuation of leadership. In Pakistan, Ali mentioned in after every three years or sometimes two years, we are changing the prime ministers. So this is the problem. This is the only way forward. Who will do it? I think time will tell us. But whatever is happening in the country, I believe that this is part of the evolution. Yes, all stakeholders are crossing their limits. This is very sad. They should act with maturity. But I think this is a part of the evolution. And I'm optimistic with the passage of time within one or two years, maybe we will see a different system in Pakistan, a different Pakistan on a right direction. So right now, a direction is nowhere. Sometime we are very close with China. Sometime we are very close with US. There is no consistent foreign policy. And foreign policy should be based on our economic interests, not on religion or not on any other thing. Look at India, look at Turkey and other countries how they are maintaining their relationships with other countries. So we are becoming irrelevant because we are wasting the time. I worked for China and in my, when I joined the government, I advised uh, to establish a China-Pakistan Investment and Business Forum. And we signed the framework agreement with China government. I was a signatory from Pakistan site during the visit of Prime Minister to China. And in the Chinese system, they never worked without the framework. In the history of Pakistan, this was first time. And what was the objective of China-Pakistan Investment Forum? We engaged 20 big players from both sides. And both governments were collaborating. The only purpose was to do the outreach. And this was for joint ventures and collaborations. China economy is big. China population is big. I believe that hardly 8-10% investors visited Pakistan. So there is a consensus that we should explore, we should engage maximum investors. But what is happening that uh, China was unhappy with us as far as the business is concerned. And when we say China is our big friend, it is our Himalaya, it is our friend, and it is our friend, it is our friend, it is our friend, it is our friend, it is our Business is all about give and take. Hum, for granted as nation. I may be very candid, but I am sharing the truth, whatever I learned, what I, I observed actually. So China was not happy, China is not happy with us. Wherever they are collaborating is because of their strategic issues. We are not facilitating them, we are wasting their time. I can't share many things here openly, but uh, during my interactions, when I was the part of the government, and later also, they are upset with us. Look at our, uh, about our special economic zone. Lucky Motor is a classic example. I think you made a road too, you made a road, you made a road, you made a road, you made This is the status of all the economic zone. The Board of Investment is the Secretariat, but after 18 amendment, this is with the provincial governments. This is actually a heaven for land grabbers, massive corruption in uh, Israel economic zones. And every government did it. Every government. Ek zameen aap lete hain, paanch ekad. Zirbut aapko hoti hai. Futuristic aap dekhate hain, 50, 60, 70 ekad. Aur kuch saalo mein wo commercial hoti hai, uski price to deal ho jati hai. This is happening. No facilities. Kuch jago pe kaam hua hai. But jiski zaruwati ni hua. So what we proposed uh, later, the government departed and nothing happened later, that uh, China government established 22 G2G special economic zone in 22 countries. So we proposed the same idea to President Xi. Jab China khud special economic zone banayega, to uska investor bhi aayega. And they are experienced unko pata hai ki kaam kis tarah se hoga ye bilkul usi tarah se hai ki aap ek 
ایڈ دیکھتے ہیں دبئی میں ریگستان میں ڈیزرٹ میں وہ کہتے ہیں ایک ہاؤسنگ اسکیم بنے گی بٹ وہ ایڈ اتنا خوبصورت ہوتا ہے کہ آپ کہتے ہیں کہ یار میں اپنا گھر یہاں بناؤں گا بٹ فائیو ایئرس میں وہ سوسائٹی بن جاتی ہے آپ کھنجراب پاس سے ہنزا تک روڈ دیکھ لیں چینل نے بنائی ہے تو اس پہ کوئی پرائرٹی نہیں ہے ٹیکنالوجی ٹرانسفر کی ہم نے بات کی فارماسٹیکلس کے لیے نائنٹی پرسینٹ فارماسٹیکل کا جو را مٹیریل ہے وہ چائنا اور انڈیا سے آتا ہے تو آفٹر دا کووڈ دے واز ریئلائزیشن کہ ہمیں لوکل مینوفیکچرنگ کی طرف جانا ہوگا اس پہ بڑا سیریس کام ہوا بٹ دیر از نو کنٹینیوشن آف پالیسیز تو چیزیں اس وقت پرائرٹی کچھ اور ہے اس وقت الیکشن ہوں گے نہیں ہوں گے اس وقت کیا کرنا ہے اس وقت پرائرٹیز یہ ہیں بٹ پاکستان از سفرنگ اینڈ آل آف یو آر فائنانس پرسنس یو آر ویری ویل اویئر واٹ از ہیپننگ ان دا انڈسٹری سو اگر آپ ایک سکھ آرگنائزیشن کو لیتے ہیں تو اس کی آپ ایک ریسٹرکچرنگ کرتے ہیں جو جو آپ کو میجر اسٹیپس لینے ہوتے ہیں بولڈ اسٹیپس لینے ہوتے ہیں وہ آپ لیتے ہیں ایک روڈ میپ ہوتا ہے ایک اسٹریٹجک پلان ہوتا ہے اور پھر ود ان فیو ایئرس آپ ایک رائٹ ڈائریکشن پہ آنا شروع ہوتے ہیں اور پھر آپ پروفیٹیبل کمپنی بن جاتے ہیں پاکستان کا حال یہی ہے اس وقت تو یا تو ہم اس طرح سے کام کرتے رہیں الیکشن ہوگا تھوڑی سی اسٹیبلٹی آ جائے گی بٹ میں آپ کو گارنٹی کر رہا ہوں دو سال بعد آپ پھر وہیں پہ کھڑے ہوں گے تو دیر از اے نیڈ آف بگ ری تھنک واٹ شوڈ وی ڈو ایز اے اسٹیٹ آف پاکستان جو بھی گورنمنٹ میں ہو ہمیں ایوریج پرفارمنس کے مائنڈ سیٹ سے باہر نکلنا ہوگا ہمارا جو ایوریج ایف ڈی آئی کا انفلو تھا وہ انڈر تھری بلین ڈالر تھا پچھلے کئی سال سے اب تو وہ ڈیڑھ بلین ڈالر پہ آ گیا ہے شاید بٹ دیر از اے پوٹینشیل آف فیو بلین ڈالر ایوری ایئر فرام فیو کنٹریز اس کے لیے آپ کو ایک انیبلنگ انوائرمنٹ بنانا ہوگا میں نے ایس ایسیز کی بات کی وہاں پہ کام کرنا ہوگا آپ کو بیوروکریٹک سسٹم صحیح کرنا ہوگا اور یہ سب چیزیں ہو سکتی ہیں کوئی راکٹ سائنس نہیں ہے آپ کے تین کمپوننٹس ہیں بیوروکریسی ہے ملٹری ہے پولیٹیکل گورنمنٹ ہے تینوں کو لیبریٹ کریں اور کام کریں جب منسٹرز آتے ہیں نا ہمارے بڑے بڑے ہمارے سارے دوست ہی ہیں جس پارٹی سے بھی ہو تو وہ اپنے آپ کو افلاطون سمجھنے لگتے ہیں کہ انہیں سب کچھ آتا ہے تو باتیں بہت کرتے ہیں کام نہیں کرتے کولیبریٹ نہیں کرتے چودراہٹ جماتے ہیں اپنی دس از واٹ آئی آبزرو ان لاسٹ آف دا گورنمنٹس جب آپ اسی بیوروکریسی سے انگیج کرتے ہیں ایک اچھے ایٹیٹیوڈ کے ساتھ بیوروکریٹ بھی انسان ہی ہوتا ہے کام کرتا ہے آپ کا جب آپ کارپوریٹ میں ہوتے ہیں تب بھی تو کام ہوتا ہے آپ کا آپ کو کام نکلوانا آنا چاہیے نا تو یہی بیوروکریسی ہے وہی پاکستانی ہے اینڈ دیر آر بلین بیوروکریٹس ان ایوری منسٹری ان ایوری آرگنائزیشن میں آپ کو پچیس تیس نام تو اس وقت لے سکتا ہوں تو یہ جو ایک نیریٹو ہے نا پروپیگنڈا ہے یہ اپنی انکمپٹینس کو چھپانے کے لیے ہوتا ہے اگر ہم نے پاکستان کے لیے واقعی ایک روڈ میپ ڈیولپ کرنا ہے اس کو ایک پراپر ایک ڈائریکشن پہ لے کے جانا ہے تو ہمیں اپنے مائنڈ سیٹ کو چینج کر کے اپنی انسیکیورٹیز کو ہٹا کے کولیبریٹو انوائرمنٹ میں کام کرنا ہوگا and uh, you know i would definitely would like to have continued with this session but unfortunately we are very limited in time i still had few more questions and i was really looking forward to the answers and uh, you know uh, probably the the participants must be looking for questions so am i allowed to take one question oh, okay please so uh, where are the ushers are the ushers ready um, ایک ایک کوشچن جی ادھر آسم صاحب کے پاس لائیے گا مائی مائک لے کے جائیں چلے میں ہی دے دیتا السلام علیکم ہوپ یو بیٹر اسفر سوری ایکسکیوز مائی راسپی وائس کا گلا خراب ہے آسم صدیقی فرام ای وائی فور روڈس دا کوشچن از لنکڈ ود ود واٹ مسٹر محمد علی طبا سیڈ دیٹ یو نو ایوری تھنگ امرجز فرام لیڈرشپ اینڈ ڈو وی ریئلی ہیو گڈ لیڈرشپ دیٹ ڈرائیو تھنگس یو نو ود دا بیوروکریسی اینڈ ایوری تھنگ ان پلیس ڈو یو تھنک دیٹ فیلیئر ٹو اچیو اے لاٹ ان دا لاسٹ فائیو سیون ایئرز 
is because of the leadership not pushing on the real agenda items of investments and getting things closed rather than getting caught up in other peripheral issues which have probably pushed us down where we are right now. Look, the political leadership is here, right? उसको एक बिग रीथिंग की जरूरत है अगर वो अपनी बारियां लगाते रहेंगे और दोबारा दोबारा फेल होते रहेंगे तो अभी तक तो हो रहे थे अब से कुछ साल बाद उनके पास कुछ रहेगा नहीं सो देर इज अ नीड ऑफ दिस रियलाइजेशन इन द पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज अनफॉर्चुनेटली आर पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज आर आदर फैमिली बिजनेस और समाइम वन मैन शो दिस इज वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली हैपनिंग Second, we should understand that if we are running or managing a cabinet, we should appoint the ministers purely on merit. If someone is delivering, you should continue. If someone is not delivering, you should remove him or her. Three years, five years, you are a minister, and you are sitting there. Performance is your zero. all of you are professionals all of you are running businesses you can afford this in your organization a non performer maximum 6 months not more than 6 months this is the problem so what political leadership is doing wrong that they are protecting their left and right hands or the boot polish here This is my very candid view, actually. I'm a very open about it. I'm a very pain to it. I don't have any need to talk about it. It's my most important relationship. But our country is suffering, actually. Whatever happened in the last few days is an eye-opener. This is beyond alarming. We are seems like to enter in a civil war type situation in this country. where your military institutions are not safe anymore dozens of international friends contacted me in last 10 days pehle to hum kehte the yaar military aayegi aur bacha legi wo kehte hain yaar ye to military pe attack ho raha hai i'm not supporting or against anyone i am saying all this purely as a concern pakistani i'm also doing business in this country बट जिहाद हो गया बिजनेस करना आपका हाउ आई कन्विंस अ ग्लोबल सीओ मैंने एक ग्लोबल सीओ को बुलाया ये जब इंसिडेंट शुरू हुआ उससे कुछ घंटे पहले उसने ट्वीट की एंड विद इन फ्यू आवर्स पाकिस्तान जल रहा था अब मैं उसको कैसे कन्विंस करूं इन द लास्ट वीक ऑफ दिस मंथ आई एम होस्टिंग अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटरनेशनल डेलीगेट्स आई एम नॉट श्योर दैट वेट एवर आई विल होस्ट एम और नॉट is subject to the situation in the country so there is a big rethink at every level military or so should rethink about their plans whenever i interacted with the top leadership and i'm not talking about in last one or two years i'm talking about last seven eight years jo baat kehne ki hoti hai kehte hain to political leadership ki jo aap se main aapne baat ki na unko in tamam cheezon ko sochna hoga अदरवाइज uh, ये पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम नहीं रहेगा दे विल द बिगेस्ट लूजर वेदर दे विल लाइक इट और नॉट एंड दिस इज नॉट माई पॉलिटिकल स्टेटमेंट आई ऑलरेडी शेयर द डिस्कलेमर इन द बिगनिंग दट आई एम प्योरली टॉकिंग अबाउट एज अ स्टेट ऑफ पाकिस्तान जो चार अकाउंटेंट कम्युनिटी है उसके लिए बहुत बड़ी एक जिम्मेदारी है और मैं समी से बात कर रहा था कि आपका एक बहुत एक्टिव चैप्टर सऊदी अरेबिया में है Unfortunately, जो हमारी बिजनेस कम्युनिटी थी ना उसकी सऊदीज के साथ लिंक्स नहीं है बिकॉज आई एम वर्किंग विद दैम सिंस लास्ट वन एंड हाफ ईयर क्योंकि पहले वो ऑयल कंट्री थी हमारा उनसे लिंक नहीं था बाकी वो होली प्लेसेस थी हमारे लिए मक्का मदीना इंपॉर्टेंट था इस वक्त दुनिया का इन्वेस्टर रियाद आ रहा है और पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट भी उस लेवल पर काम नहीं कर रही सो यू आर अ पावर इंस्टीट्यूट चार्ट एंड अकाउंटेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान with a very active and vibrant chapter in saudi arabia so i urge the president of icap and the whole council to explore this opportunity 
and play your role to engage the Saudi business houses, not only to invest in Pakistan, but for collaboration of our business houses in Saudi Arabia. So on 29th of May, they are opening their four special economic zone, and they are inviting the world, and they are receptive for Pakistan. I was mentioning to Ali also. So ICAP's role is important. You can play a very important role for this country under the current scenario. So uh, I think there's, there's a great lead here that you have provided to all of the fraternity here. And uh, yeah, definitely, in one, in Saudi Arabia is one of the closest markets which is booming and uh, we definitely should need to focus over there as well. Um, what I would like to summarize from uh, what Aswa has mentioned about opportunities here and I think in the way forward particularly is that every segment of the society and every pillar of the state has to, has to perform their own duties and, and you know duties diligently and we need to take uh, you know the incompetence factor out of uh, all these segments of the society and the pillars of the state and uh, if we have to move forward and you know recreate our mark in the on the, in this universe so once again thank you very much as for accepting our invitation and coming over and thank you very much uh, all of you